Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For everyone who is new, I'm Tanya. I came to Canada as an international student and now I'm working over here full time. So guys, today's video is for all of you who are planning to come to Canada and we are going to be talking about the challenges that students face before coming to Canada and how do you tackle them. Also, we are going to be focusing on a few scholarships that students can get to come to Canada. To have this discussion, we are going to be talking to Damini Mahajan from We Make Scholars. So let's get on a call with her right now. But before that, guys, I am currently obsessing with these earrings. I've been wearing them all the time. So I really like them. They're from Kinka. And if you want to check them out, then I'm going to link them in the description. So let's get on a call with Damini now. Hey Damini, how are you? Hi Tanya, I'm good. Thanks a lot. Uh, you know, we are finally doing this video together, so I'm very excited. So before we begin, can you tell me a little more about yourself, what you do? So Tanya, I am Damini and I'm co-founder of We Make Scholars. So I uh, and me and my co-founder, we studied in the UK. Uh, we did our master's and uh, we did it with a full scholarship. Uh, you know, it was a 100% scholarship which covered uh, my, you know, expenses, tuition fee, 100% of fee, my living expenses, flight cost, everything. And that's when, you know, people not just from, you know, who were planning to come to UK, even students who were you know coming for other countries they started asking hey how did you manage to get a scholarship what all it takes to get a scholarship and that's when we started uh, a Facebook group and that grew, group grew like a wildfire and, and by the time you know we graduated by the time we completed our one year of masters we had about 50,000 people in the group and uh, that's what you know people started requesting hey can you make it up probably a more full-fledged website and you know keep sharing the information about scholarships and all and I think that's what led to uh, start of VMAX scholars uh, you know we started in 2015 uh, after that in 2016 towards the later half of 2016 a lot of people started asking hey can you help with loans also because you know getting a loan in India is not easy so we help students free of cost we help them with the entire process and we are funded by the government of India uh, under you know Ministry of IT so that's why it's fully free it's perfect because so many people face this difficulty of um, trying to get loans because studying abroad is really expensive and you might have to take a loan for that but the process is so difficult and anyway studying abroad the process is very complicated so on top of that this is like so it's very nice to get that insight from your head. Damini, are there any specific difficulties which you would like to highlight? I think the first challenge what I have seen people facing is, uh, you know, about the timelines. So first thing they think is, hey, when do I start? And what do I start with? When to write the test, IELTS, TOEFL, and when should I apply, start applying for universities and how this whole thing is structured. So I think that in that uh, regards, you know, the one tip which I give everyone is that uh, you should apply or you should write the test at least as early as you can so you know when you are having you know even the initial thoughts of uh, you know studying abroad let's say canada um, go start preparing for your ielts or toefl because all most of these exams are valid for two years which means even if you write early you can you know even if you plan in the next two years you can go abroad so i think that is one thing and after that you know about the admission deadline so i think by the time they write their test they know where do they stand what kind of colleges they are get, going to get in and after that of course they would know you know what sort of admission deadlines are there and what timeline they have to follow so that is one challenge the second challenge i have seen especially again people coming to canada is um, because see mostly people go at post graduation level right after their graduation so at master's level uh, people either they can go for their master's degree or they can go for a pg diploma or they can go for a pg certificate i think people you know spend a lot of time choosing in between these three also so i think many many students are lost in that uh, circle so uh, again on that note i would say you know uh, just probably one line note on each of these is master's degree is the most expensive one uh, it might lead to a better pay scale or a, maybe getting a job faster 
PG diploma is a little cheaper than a master's degree, and uh, but you know it might take some time for you to get uh, your job. And then comes the PG certificate, which is even more cheaper than PG diploma, but it eventually means you know getting a lesser pay scale and um, maybe taking more time to find a job. So I think it depends on the student how much he's willing to spend, and you know uh, what sort of job he should expect after that. Okay, the third and the last one is uh, getting funds people get their admission they are like oh i got my offer letter and they're so excited and you know all in that energy and then they start going for their visa process right so they start exploring uh, the sds category and you know what are the requirements and things like that and that's when they see oh gic okay so i need money for that and i need to pay one year fee and then they realize oh how i don't have that much money arranged so I, I think that's another thing I would tell everyone that see GIC is $10,200 uh, Canadian dollars and then you have your fee so when you start applying to colleges you of course know what sort of fee uh, it's gonna incur so just think once again that you know whether you have that sort of money or not if you do not have that money and you know that you know you probably will have to take external funds then you should start applying for scholarships or loans. So again, as I told you, you know, we even help students finding scholarships so they can, you know, come to vmixscholars.com. There are more than 26,000 scholarships listed. They can put, you know, which country they are from, you know, what course they are going for, which university or just overall in Canada they want to see. They can come and put those filters and they can start looking for scholarships. And after applying for scholarships, they can, you know, even apply for loans also. So I think those are, you know, if I have to summarize, these are the three challenges. One is knowing the timeline, selecting the course and about the funding. Now, just a last note on the, uh, you know, funding bit. Uh, so as I mentioned, we make scholars can help them with scholarships and loans. So when it comes to loans, I think people face a lot of challenge with the banks also because, you know, for GIC, they need money before visa. Correct. So uh, when they go to the bank and ask, hey, I need money before visa, bank is going to put all questions on them saying that, hey, what if your visa gets rejected? How will I get my money back? There's that. And so that's one thing which I want to tell everyone that, you know, if you apply for your loan via VMAX scholars, we will make sure that, you know, you get your GIC money and your one year fee very smoothly because, you know, we have helped so many students. We know what to tell the bank and why will they you know release that money moving on from these difficulties i get so many questions of students asking about scholarships specifically in canada for pg courses because like you have always heard getting scholarships in masters because they are really expensive pg it's a little more difficult because one fees is a little less and another one like in canada specifically there are so many people applying and it's so competitive so is it possible to get a scholarship? It's a very common question even I get on my channel. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, see people, one perception which I want to change here is people feel that, you know, getting a scholarship is always a merit thing. So they feel, hey, I have to be an extraordinarily bright student to get that scholarship. So I want to tell that, you know, other than the merit scholarship, this we call it as merit scholarship, there are also two other kinds of scholarship. One is like a need-based scholarship, wherein, uh, you know, uh, people based on their financial condition, it is given. So it could be, you know, from Indian government or a foundation in India or a trust in India who is, uh, you know, trying to upgrade the, uh, uplift the people, you know, who have belonged to lesser income group. So, uh, you know, I have seen scholarships which are being offered to people whose family income is less than 4 lakhs per annum or 6 lakhs per annum sort of thing. And then there are uh, some special scholarships also. So I think those are the other um, scholarships and now comes to the merit-based scholarship so merit-based is of course you know it is given based on your academics and there are plenty of such scholarships for Canada so if you come to the website people can find so many such scholarships but again merit-based scholarships are a little challenging because you know let's say if you're an average student let's say you have 70 75 percent in your 10th 12th or probably graduation uh, they are going to be as you mentioned you know it's very competitive so there are definitely a lot more students who have a better profile than yours who are applying for it but again I you know tell all these students that uh, see merit-based scholarships are sort of so okay I'll give you an example so let's say if I am a donor and I'm offering scholarship to 100 people okay and I get 500 applications for that and uh, I am it's a merit-based scholarship for example and uh, so I'm gonna take top 100 
right based on you know overall academic profile internship work ex all those things uh, so you never know what kind of applications i'm getting right so maybe i i have got uh, applications only from you know people who have 75% 70% and this that and maybe you hold 80% and you are in my top 100 right so that's why i encourage people that you know you keep applying if you find a scholarship which you are eligible for the cut off is generally going to be like hey more than 60% so you may or you may not get it so please apply and on the last note other than these scholarships i also you know encourage people to apply for ta and ra and these kind of positions which uh, is a little difficult to find because professors don't open it publicly so you have to send them email saying that hey i'm coming to this your university and i have i would like to work under you and this that so i think that also people should start doing uh before they land in canada so send them email early so that you know you are probably their first uh, uh application and the first preference so uh, that's on the scholarship and tara note yeah thank you so much damini to give and share your knowledge about the scholarships and loans it has helped me a lot i'm sure it's going to help the audience a lot too um so our next segment of this video will be the difficulties that students face after they land in canada and that will be posted on damini's channel so guys her channel link is going to be in my description so check it out and stay tuned for the next video and thank you so much for watching guys I will see you guys again soon and don't forget to like comment and subscribe on Bye. both of our channels